out of respect for your time, what would normally take three hours to explain, we're gonna do in 20 minutes. If you really wanna know how the image was formed on the shroud, please give me 20 minutes because I can't do it in less time than that. It's just not possible. It's a fairly complex subject. I'm gonna simplify it as much as it is humanly possible to do so. But we are gonna get into this hardcore. You are not aware of the fact that a nuclear bomb was detonated over Hiroshima and you came across some of these images in the city that were created by the result of the nuclear blast by the flash flash of white light caused shadows of those images those reflected images to remain in this case it was into concrete one would not look at this and think Oh, this image was caused by light photons striking the surface of this sidewalk in the UV X-ray spectrum. No, they would be thinking this is a contact image or a painting, but they are not. These are images as a result of a photochemical and thermal process, meaning a process as a result of light and heat. This is not a case of the body being burned into the ground as it might appear or a shadow burned into the concrete. It's the area around the shadow that has been lightened, that has been bleached by the intense white light. It was so intense that it changed the color of the concrete. So the body blocked the light and that area of the street was unaffected by the light leaving an optical illusion behind that a shadow was left behind when in fact it's the area around the shadow that's been lightened. It is a similar process to how an x-ray photo is taken. This is another example of an image that is created when there is a distance between the object, the man, and the wall. This is not a case of the body being thrust into the wall and burned into it. The surrounding area where you do not see the shadow, that is the area that has been bleached and has been colored. Now if this image of the man from Hiroshima was created on the side of a church wall, there would be skeptics saying, that's not a real person. And the church hired some artist to paint that shadow on the wall. That's not a real person. It's a sculpture that was pressed against that wall. It's a deception and a trick to get people to come as a tourist attraction. It's not a real person. But yes, this was a genuine living flesh and blood person. These images from Hiroshima are a photochemical process and a thermal process as a result of the nuclear blast, as a result of light and heat. And the image on the Shroud of Turn was formed in a similar manner. Note I said similar, not exactly the same. But in each case, the body or the object is close to the wall slash film plate slash linen. UVB rays are involved in the image process in the ultraviolet light aspect of the electromagnetic spectrum. Light and radiation is passing through the body and making contact with the film plate. The film plate is either behind or in front of the subject. In the case of the shroud, it's a double-sided film plate one behind and one in front of the subject. The closer the body or the object is to the film plate, it increases the sharpness slash resolution. And you'll note in the shroud of Turin, where the body is closest to the cloth, that's where the highest resolution is. And as the body is separated from the cloth, where there's more separation, that's where the image fades away. And the same thing happens here with the Hiroshima images. Note as we zoom in on the silhouette of the person whose image was left here on the sidewalk that when we get to the feet that the image is darker. Why is that? That's because the feet were close to the sidewalk and blocked more light. So the body is acting as a shield so the light is not able to make contact with that area of the sidewalk. But as more separation occurs and there's greater distance between the sidewalk and the person, the shadow fades in color because there's a greater distance between the body and the film plate, which in this case is the sidewalk. All right, but these are similarities between the shroud and the Hiroshima images. Number one, the body or the object is close to the film plate. Number two, the image is darker when closer to the film plate. Film plate meaning the wall or the sidewalk or the linen. 
Three, the image fades as greater separation occurs. Four, UV light is involved in the image process. And number five, the film plate is behind the subject. And number six, both the Hiroshima images and the shroud image is sharper when closer to the film plate, meaning has better resolution. All right, these are differences between the shroud and the Hiroshima images. Number one, the shroud image is more of a result of light than it is heat, whereas the Hiroshima images are a result of both light and heat. Okay, number two, shades of light and dark represent distance points on the Shroud of Turin, whereas the Hiroshima images, the shades of light and dark, do not represent distance. They do not tell us how far this man was from this wall at the time the image was created. But the Shroud of Turin, the colored versus uncolored fibers represent distance. And where the cloth is closer to the body, more linen fibers are colored. And as there is greater separation between the cloth and the body, less of the linen fibers are colored. It is so accurate that when the image is placed under a VP8 analyzer, it will tell us exactly what this body looked like in 3D form, accurate to the millimeter of the original subject. It's absolutely incredible. There is no other image in the world like it. There is no x-ray photo in the world that has distance information like the Shroud has, no photograph, no hologram, no painting, no other image in the world that has distance points mapped out like there is in the Shroud of Turin. For that information to be there, that means that over a million different moving electrical signals emitted from the body that was in the Shroud and then made contact with the linen. And that would have to be UVB light of a single wavelength. After 500,000 hours of research, the scientists came up with this. The coloring of the shroud is due to one, rapid aging of the linen flax, dehydration, only the superficial layer of the linen fibers are colored, and they were colored a sepia color. What does that? UVB rays meet all of those unique characteristics. One, they cause rapid aging in skin, they cause dehydration of the skin, it only affects the superficial layer of the skin, and it colors your skin a sapia color. Do you think it would do the same thing to linen? Congratulations, you just learned, in part, how the image on the shroud was formed. And like in Hiroshima, there was an explosion of light which caused the shadow images on the walls. There was an explosion of light in the tomb where the body of Jesus was laid and left his image on the shroud. When the flash of white light occurred in Hiroshima, people that had dark colored clothing on sometimes had the imprint of the linen put right into their skin. Whereas people with light colored shirts, the light reflected off of it and they were unaffected by the light. In fact, if the Shroud of Turin was a dark colored fabric, we would likely see what would be a scorch. My point, Shroud image is on the borderline of being a thermal process, a process involving heat and light. All right, we're looking at this linen fibril. If, if, it, was, if it was magnified 10,000 times and I was holding a fiber from the linen, from the shroud of turn in my hand, this is what it would look like. And of course, one of them is colored. And the reason that this one fibril is colored is because it's undergone a rapid aging process, rapid aging. That is because a very focused light hit that particular fibril. It's one fibril out of 100 that's colored. So you have to be focused on that. You have to be, you have to zero in on that with a laser beam. In the same way when you lay out the sun and UV light hits your skin, it changes color. The same thing happened to the linen fibrils. They were exposed to UV light and not UV light from the sun, but slices of light, one one hundredth the thickness of a human hair, laser beam, focused beams of light, millions of them. 
and coincidentally the only credible looking reproduction of the shroud was done with an argon fluoride laser. Okay, so is there anything in the human body that emits a light similar to laser light? And yes, there is. DNA emits laser-like light. Laser light through DNA diffracted creates holograms. All right, we're gonna note the similarities between a hologram and the shroud return. Both are extremely superficial. The images you're looking at are 1 50th the thickness of a human hair on that film plate. Thin to say the least. It's a one color image. Single wavelength, single color. Shroud return, single color image. Hologram has very good resolution. Shroud image has good resolution. The object, when you make a hologram, must be extremely close to that film plate. If you move it past four centimeters or more, you will not get a hologram. Shroud of turn image, same thing. No image process took place past four centimeters. Light comes from only one direction to make a hologram, and the image vanishes from view when it is flipped around to the backside. When the shroud of turn is backlit, you cannot see the image. When a holographic film plate is turned around, you cannot see the image because it's so incredibly superficial. But of course, if the shroud was a painting or a contact image, we would be able to see it from the backside, but we can't see it. Why is that? Fly, think about that. It's because it's not a contact image or a painting. If you were to put an image like this, information like this, and put it through a VP8 analyzer, which is a brightness map. It is going to interpret that information, the white lines as being higher in elevation, the dark lines as being lower in elevation, or the VP8 analyzer can be programmed in reverse, the dark lines as being higher in elevation and the white lines as being lower in elevation. In the case of the Shroud of Turin image, whether you put the negative image under the VP8 analyzer or the positive, it still comes out as the exact same 3D information. The most important thing to know about a VP8 analyzer without going into any complex scientific terms is it will make clear distinction between what is genuine and what is not genuine. Bottom line, when you put the Shroud of Turin image underneath a VP8 analyzer, it will tell you this image was the result of an interference pattern of light with absolute 100% certainty. And that VP8 analyzer is telling every person in the world right in this moment, this shroud image, this was created by an interference pattern of laser light. The acid test to know if information is genuine or not, as in the shroud of turn, is to Put it through the VP8 analyzer and see what you get. And the shroud of turn passes that test. In the same way gold is tested by fire to see if it's genuine, the shroud of turn passes that test. We have time illustrated as going in a straight line. And on the left hand side of the screen is a time in the past, 33 AD, and then of course it is 2016 today. That's present time, but it's believed that the wave of time can be curved. That's called curved space time, making it possible to travel from one point in time, for example, present time, to actually go back into the past. In this case, I just put for an example, I put for an example 33 AD. But in order to get from point A to point B, there must be a what? A tunnel slash wormhole. In near-death experiences, people often give testimony that they were in a tunnel. It's very common. And that tunnel was either going toward darkness or going toward light. It is not a forensic fact that a wormhole formed at the time of the resurrection. That is just pure speculation, so we're not going to get deep into this subject. It's possible, so we did a resurrection scene with this possibility. Anyways, the space between point A and point B is called singularity. Theoretically, a place where time no longer exists. A place in between.
between two points in time. All right, we gotta move quick. This is our final display, some important points. Number one, blood stains first, images over blood, two separate events. Number two, blood is visible when cloth is backlit because blood soaks all the way through the cloth. The image doesn't because why? It is so superficial. Number three, blood passed over a dozen tests to be genuine blood four times what is required by law to be acceptable evidence in court. Need more be said. Number four, blood is post-mortem blood on the shroud and pre-mortem, meaning Jesus was struggling on the cross for his life and then he died. Both types of his blood are on the cloth. Okay, number five, blood is out of stereo register with the body. There was an interaction between the body and the cloth at the time of the resurrection, so the cloth shifts out of position so the blood doesn't exactly line up with the body. Okay, number six, pathologists confirmed, no less than seven, confirmed a dead body that was scourged and crucified was in the cloth. Okay, number seven, skeptic replicas do not match forensic evidence. Interesting. Number eight, our presentation does match the forensic evidence. Number nine, the forensic evidence is saying this is what happens to a piece of linen when a body is resurrected.